Hello everyone and welcome back to DSR Gaming. This is going to be a bit of a different video today and what we're doing is uh, I've decided to have a look back at the Mass Effect trailer that we got from the Video Game Awards and go through. Now there's been a few analysis videos online, there's been a lot of talk amongst the Mass Effect community about sort of what this trailer entails. I think the one thing everyone's taken from it, and uh, hopefully everyone who watches this realizes, um, is that we are definitely having it set in the Milky Way galaxy. So one of the most obvious things, which has been confirmed um, on Twitter from the Mass Effect developers, is that uh, the starting screenshot does show Andromeda as well as the Milky Way and it pans into the Milky Way to show you that we're, that is where their next main Mass Effect game is going to be taken. Now they did say this doesn't mean that that's, that's the complete end for Andromeda at all. Um, the likelihood is they might do what they did with Andromeda and throw in some nods to uh, what sort of happened and when they left, depending on when the game is set that is of course. Um, we all we know, which I'll get into a bit later, is that it's going to be set after um, the end of Mass Effect 3, and that is already set after the ships, or the arcs, as they're called, the five arcs, uh, leaving to go to the Andromeda Galaxy. So the fir very first clip that you see for the opening is the two galaxies. It pans straight in and goes into the Milky Way. Now, the next lot, of uh, sort of content we get as we're zooming in is we're getting a um, almost like a an overview of history from uh, humanity leading up to the end of the Mass Effect, uh, Mass Effect 3 game which is the Reaper War so the first thing we have is we hear some old broadcasts we then hear about um, so it's just going through it now for you and uh, one yeah one bit we hear is um, about Arctura Station, which was humanity's first sort of foothold out of the Sol system, and one of our first bases of operations. And what you hear is, uh, again, it's quite a clear clip, but what you hear is them saying, um, unknown vessel, we need the first contact protocol, which is clearly leading us into the war with the Turians. Um, and that's what we get as we're kind of zooming past um, a star as well there. And that's what that leads into. The next thing I kind of want to touch upon is um, after it goes through that and then goes through about us joining the um, galactic civilizations on, um, I guess, having peace after the war there. Um, what you then hear is someone say, Arc 6 is away. Now, from what I recall, I did play Andromeda the whole way through and. I don't regret playing it, but it wasn't the best game at all, um, especially comparing it to the first three games. But I'm sure there was only five arcs that left. You had the humans, the Turians, the Asari, I think it was the Krogans, and the one that we never saw was the Quarians. Unless... No, it was the Quarians, because I don't remember seeing Salarians at all. So what was housing Arc 6 is the question. What species was Arc 6? Was it the Salarians? I can't imagine it being the Vorcha or the Volus or the Hanar. I mean, they played roles in the games but they weren't exactly big roles. I mean, we only ever played as a Volus in um, the uh, multiplayer game and it won't be Protheans because there's only one left alive from what we know. Um, so, but it was an interesting little bit that um, has been picked up on by some of the community there as well and I wanted to touch upon that because not many Videos. I mean, I've only watched two myself, but not many videos um, seem to pick up on that. Um, but yeah, so Arc 6, that could mean that they're not completely done with Andromeda. They have said they want to do a bit more with it, but whether that means a game, whether that means an animated show, similar to, um, was it Mass Effect Paragon Lost? Um, you know, that they could do something there. But that's a nice little hint to uh, an arc that we never did get any information on. So... Moving further in, we come to the bit where we're going past the destroyed Mass Effect relay, which we all know happens regardless of what ending you choose. All the relays get destroyed. Um, 
And so we go past that, we hear the classic Reaper noise, which uh, signifies and defi definitely kind of uh, cements in place that this is going to be taken in the Milky Way galaxy. Um, there's also a message after that I've been trying to understand every time I listen to this trailer. So it says, is anyone receiving this, or if anyone's receiving this, and then something else that I just can't quite make out. If anyone in the community does know what that is, or I will still be trying to keep up with all of these um, things that people are finding in the trailers, but I just want to know if that's anything else. Is that something from the Normandy um, when it crash landed, or is it another ship? Is it someone? Is it a um, message from Earth? after the destruction, because it comes after we hear the reap noise in the battle. So I just would like to know what that says at the end, but there's a nice little thing there that I've been trying to understand. The next clip we see comes in, uh, it's around the 56, 57 second mark, and it's a, it's a zoom in on another ga uh, part of our Milky Way galaxy. Um, and to me, again, this might be me um, just throwing balls and hoping to hit a mark here, but it looks slightly like in the shape of a geth. Now, whether that signifies that they are officially, I mean, it looks like they're going for the destroy ending, and I'll come across into why in a second, but that could symbolize the eradication of all artificial constructs, like the geth and ED, unfortunately, um, and any AIs that were out there um, with the destroy ending. And I'm thinking maybe that's a hint that that is definitely the ending they're going for, is that destroy ending. Um, so moving further into the trailer, this is when we come to the ice planet from the Mud Skipper or the XT8, as we've seen a few times before in concept art. So looking at it from about the one minute eight, uh, one minute eight second mark, what we see, everyone picks up on the, well, not everyone, but I personally, when I first watched this, I, I noticed that she was walking on a dead reaper. Although it could be a mountain, looking at sort of the wire work around it and the sort of underneath the snow from where you can see it crumbling, it looks like a reaper to me. And then we did have confirmation that in the background as well, that is a reaper. Um, so it looks like there's a couple of reapers here that are dead and who we imagine to be uh, Liara is scaling a dead reaper. But not many people, I say not many people, a few people have picked up on it, but not many places talk about the one that she's climbing on. They talk a lot about the one in the background, but not the one she's climbing on. And sort of as we move further in, we see them pick up a piece of uh, N, well, a piece of gear with the N7 signia on it, the label. Looks to be part from, uh, from a helmet, sorry. And then, that's when, just before it, focuses on the face we see in the background uh, companions next to the XT8 ship um, so one of them I'm pretty sure that's a Salarian almost 100% sure that's a Salarian um, the other one could be a Krogan and much like ev everyone else the one in the middle is so dubious because we can't really tell what it definitely is. Some have said it could be um, a drill, similar to the um, that the race that was Thane um, or Theron, his son. Um, it could be, some people have even said it might be someone from the Andromeda system, but I can't see that being the case. And again, I'll explain just after we get through this next bit here, why I don't feel that. Um, but then it zooms in on the Osiris face, and we're all going for the fact that that's gotta be Liara. It's got to be. Um, as she does her cheeky little smile, um, I say cheeky, but she does that smile, that smirk, which reminds me of the ending of Mass Effect 3, the extended cut. If you pick the destroy ending, um, regardless, whoever you romanced, whether it be Liara, Ashley, Tali, yeah, not Tali, but Liara, Ashley, or whoever else is on the Normandy ship, like Tali, um, when going to put your name on the plaque, if you pick the destroy ending, before they do so, they look at the name, look up and smile. Or if it's VR Ashley, you can't tell if it's Tarly, but yeah, like the Ara smiles. And it's the same sort of smile that I remember seeing at the end of that game. Um, which hints to Shepard being alive, and then at the end of the destroy ending, um, if for those that haven't played it, this is a very, very late spoiler. But spoiler warning, 
he breathes or she breathes depending on if you played a male or a female shepherd um, and the reason they didn't put it up there is that they still feel that they're alive so that's what I get from that now some people have said that or some people were is there's a lot of debate about when this is going to be set some have said that um, it's going to be set quite a bit in the future because Osiris lived for so long um, up to a thousand years this could be set anywhere five six seven maybe not so much 800 but up to like seven maybe 800 at the most years in the future um, some have noticed uh, the graphical design of Liara's face with the wrinkles and all that now the one thing I will say is we have seen a change in the way Asari look only ever so slightly with the textures as the game's developed. So going back to Mass Effect 1, there isn't so, I mean you can tell what an Asari looks like regardless, but there's not much say like skin texture or design to it because of the graphical limitations of the early days of the 360. Now here we do see wrinkles um, where she's smiling, we see some around her eyes, but that doesn't necessarily mean this is gonna be set six to seven hundred years in the future it could well be and that could be the case and seeing if they do do that it'd be interesting to see what they're going to do and how it's all going to play out on a personal level i want uh, shepherd back as i'm sure many of the community do um he was sort of like the glue for the whole team and the, the sort of the storytelling there um so i do want him i want him back personally um, and some of the other things that make me feel like this isn't set so far in the future are things like the armour is buried under what, a centimetre of snow? Maybe it's had a bit more, maybe it's had a bit less. If this is 700 years in the future, why is it only that thin amount of snow that is covered under for a start? It's not like there's any ex excavation equipment around. Um, it's not like you can see they've been digging everywhere. It was just kind of there in the snow as she picks it up. Um, I mean, they could have cut and then they have done all that, but uh, also there's no real, bar it being broken, which looks like from an impact, um, say like when Shepard fell towards a nice planet, which this could well be that planet, the one from Mass Effect 2 where you make all the uh, memorialization of like the Normandy and the crew. Um, but why is there no degradation really on the armor there? I mean, there would be at least some, or even if not, there surely wouldn't be that much of it unearthed and in almost pristine condition bar it being broken. Um, so that's one thing that makes me believe that. Um, with going back to the wrinkles quickly, because um, I diverted there, um, it could just be a text, uh, texture update, graphical update for the design of the characters. So it could be 30 years in the future, 20 years in the future. It might not be that long. Um, and with the new graphical hardware that we have for um, the new Xbox Series X, the PlayStation 5, as well as uh, obviously PC always getting um, a lot of updates with the, like, the new RTX uh, 3080, um, there's nothing really stopping them from making these minor little graphical changes that make it look that much better and give it much more graphical fidelity. So that doesn't mean that this is set so far in the future, it might just mean that they've got better hardware that they can now use. So they're going to increase the graphical fidelity of everything, like the character designs. Another thing that makes me think it can't be set too far in the future is as we zoom in, although we get the clips, like the audio clips, um, from the past leading up to the war, everything we see leading into it, though, seems to be after. Such like the Mass Effect uh, relay being destroyed. If it is so far in the future, Surely they would have done like a mass cleanup of some of the tech or maybe taken it or studied it I'm not saying the mass relay would be active again. What I'm saying is around that mass relay especially there's a lot of debris a lot of debris and I'm sure it could be in a remote part of the system which means they can't access it because um, faster than light travel um, is going to be greatly inhibited due to the Mass Effect relays not working um, but surely there would have been some some sort of clean-up expedition done to get this technology, because it is ancient technology. Um, and that's my thoughts on that anyway. I mean, it makes me believe that it's not going to be set that far in the future, but I could be wrong. Um, we've got what's probably going to be a long time until it comes out anyway. 
I'm going to be optimistic and say 2023, but I think it could be a bit longer than that. But I'm sure we'll hear more in the coming coming months and years. <clears throat> but apart from that, there's not much else I wanted to sort of go into on the trailer. There's been a few things that other people have talked about. Um, like, it's, uh, I'm trying to think at the top of my head now, and I can't. There's been other things that people have talked about um, with the trailer. But on a personal standpoint, I feel like this is not long after the, the ending of Mass Effect 3. And I think the Legacy Edition is especially coming out now, or coming out um, spring apparently next year, is a hint that it's going to be following on from Mass Effect 3 and not long after, so Shepard will be back. Um, another hint to that for myself was they got the voice actors back together for the reunion on the N7 day, which is when they made the announcement of the Legendary Edition. If they got them all back, and now that they've announced and shown off a teaser for the next Mass Effect game, that could have been a two-part project of them going, we want, can you come back and do our N7 day for the remaster of the three games? And maybe even had discussions about the voice actors coming back for the next game. Now I'd be extremely happy if that's the case, um, and it will definitely be a game that I'll be looking forward to and trying to keep myself involved as much as I can um, to get all the information because I love Mass Effect. It is my favourite uh, series, favourite RPG series that I've played, um, and I will be covering the Legendary Edition for the channel when it comes out. I'll be doing all three of them as well. So um, I'm looking forward to doing that, but yeah, I just feel like it's going to be a continuation of Shepard's story personally, um, especially with how hard Bioware's had it recently with Anthem and with Andromeda. They weren't exactly the best rated games, and they weren't even in my, I mean I played both, and Anthem I got halfway through and I couldn't continue, Andromeda I got to the end and I got 99% of the achievements and then I just haven't bothered to go back to get one more which requires one more playthrough. It wasn't a bad game but it wasn't a great game, it just wasn't Mass Effect in my opinion. Um, so I feel like they need to build the trust back and part of that is the Legendary Edition coming out which a lot of fans have wanted for ages, a remaster, a collection for the newer consoles that we can all play in remastered graphics which we've now got coming which is fantastic. Um, and I think their next step could be to finally rebuild this trust, is to do this next story, do it around Shepard and around the rebuilding of everything after the war. Um, I feel like a lot of fans want Shepard back. Um, I, I could be wrong though, there could be a lot of fans out there, and there probably are a lot of fans out there that wouldn't mind seeing it set so far in the future. Um, but I feel like they're going to listen to fans a lot more and I feel like they're going to take on board a lot of the feedback, a lot of the commentary that they're probably reading about online from their teaser trailer and from the announcement of the Legendary Edition to try and build their trust back in, in being a great role-playing game developer. We've also got Dragon Age 4 on the way from, from them as well, which we, we had a trailer for, but I'm not going to cover that one here. The final little bit from me is we have seen some artwork previously in regards to what looked to potentially be an artificial mass relay that the galactic civilizations have been developing possibly together. Um, if I can find the picture again I'll put it in the video um, but if not have a look around for the Mass Effect artwork so new Mass Effect game artwork and there's definitely one there which um, I think it was MR7 it had on there which was to me looked to sound like a mass relay server. Um, but again, I could be wrong. So here's hoping we get a look soon into it anyway. And uh, thank you all for those that watched. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you like it, please leave a comment and a like. Um, and I'm always up for some debate with Mass Effect. So leave me a comment. I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.